little bit. So doing a porch, I'm gonna start with the floor. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my wall. The floor I'm gonna use here um, is going to be the nine and a half inch TGI OSB three quarter inch half inch chipboard. Mainly because this is the only floor is only over the porch. It doesn't have to cold up the house itself. It's just the porch. So it's kind of a lower weight building. Now, if you want to do a cold storage area, then you would use the four inch concrete. That's going to be a little trickier. That means you have to have steps on steps. So it's a kind of a, a little different animal, but um, it'll work out somehow. And I'll try and show both. So here we go. If I'm going to do the wall, pick walls tool, that means I can pick these exterior walls. And if you pick on the outside, that'll be in the right location. Just, just around like that. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, really quick, really easy. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this portion here into cold storage, and I'll make this portion here uh, not. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So crazy. I can't believe this house is such a Frankenstein house. It's kind of funny. All right. So if I'm going to do what I just said, I'm going to take out a couple of lines here. Because um, now I'm going to do mixed use, and that's ice cream. Now I'm going to switch to line. I'm going to pick up where this pink line is over here in my garage. And this is going to come right straight across. And being straight is the tricky part. Okay, right there. Now, this distance from the front of the house out to the edge of my porch, that's up to you. It needs to be at least three feet. That's the minimum. You have to have enough room that when people stand at your door and you open the screen, you don't put them on their keister uh, just because you don't like them. Or you guess you can with a salesman. That's okay. But, but if they're in ties and shirts, then be nice to them. Um, so we've got three feet minimum. You don't want to make it so huge. The biggest porch I've ever done in the front of the house is six feet. So I'm going to do a quick measure here just to see where I'm at. Oh, I'm going to beat that today. I'm going to go eight foot weird number. Cool. That's a weird number. I can live with that, I think. Not really. I'm going to change that up. I don't like that weird number. So I'm going to take this out. I am going to actually do an offset. And I am going to go ahead and do um, six feet because a um, couple of things. That's a lot of space. And if you've got six feet there, that's enough room to walk and have rocking chairs to throw tomatoes at the kids going by on skateboards. Anybody had that experience yet? All people throwing things at you because you're on a skateboard. That was a standard in the 80s, but our skateboards were like 12 inches long and nine inches wide. They're weird. It was a weird year. Okay. So now I'm going to corner off my side here. I'm just making the floor. I'm, did, I'm talking in circles to give you guys a chance to figure out what you want. Six feet is three foot, four foot, six foot. You could go eight uh, if you would like. That's up to you. And then I'm going to close this off on the corner here. Just bring a line straight down. Make sure it's again a 90 degree line. Corner tool and close that off. And that becomes my porch. And it's kind of nice. It's pretty. There's going to be a few things I'm going to have to adjust on this as we're going to do with the foundation. Okay. So I'm going to check that one off. And we hit yes on this one. So there's my porch. Now, this is going to be um, a porch with a crawl space. This will be a porch with a foundation. That way, for those of you from Kearns, I'm redoing everything on top of itself, which is somewhat cross-circuiting my brain right now. But that's okay. I'm old. It can die. I'll get a new one later. I'm going to do another floor. This is the one that would be for a cold storage floor. So I'm going to make the concrete cap first. So I'm going to do, um, again, architecture floor. I'm going to change this to the four inch slab right here. And I could use the wall tool. It might get a little crazy. I'm going to go one, two, punch of that, then switch to the line. 
drag a line out and then match hopefully oh that was so sucky bad teacher bring that line out and then an extend from the other side and this is going to look kind of weird when it's all done but i think it's going to work crossing lines a nice corner tool connect the dots connect the lines so this is a concrete pad. It's also the first floor, okay? Neither of these are exactly where I want them to be. I'm gonna have to make some adjustments, but I need a starting point. I need something I can see to do this. So I'm gonna check that off. So we're gonna work on the front of the house right now. Notice the concrete symbols here, not here. And I've got windows and doors inside out. That's crazy. Let's fix that. Okay, so I'm going to start here with a cold storage and I'm going to create my foundation wall. Now, for the class, if you have brick or stone, you use the 10 inch foundation wall. I don't need that big of a wall for a porch for either any type. I then do an 8 inch. So this will be different for all of us, but for those from Kearns, make a note. You then do the same thing, different thickness. Okay, here we go. Then they go to structure. And they click on the wall in structure. And they go to my wall choices and my properties. Scrolling till I get to the foundation set. For your porches, you then use an eight inch concrete foundation. For your house, for right now, you guys from Kernsen use a 10 inch. If you have stone or brick, if you have stucco or siding, use an eight. Okay, fair enough. Any questions? Okay, so I'm gonna click on my eight inch concrete. I do not have furring on this. Curves, we'll talk about furring later when I get this part done. Okay, so I wanna look at where it's going. Right now it's on fish face exterior. That's good because I want the foundation on the inside. The foundation for your porches is only going to be on the sides that are not connected to the house. So I'm going to, that my base is um, going to be at the top of, top of footing for this one, TO footing, because this is going all the way down the basement level. If you are from Kearns and you do not have a basement, you then go TO garage footing. Okay, so you have to make that call right now because you're forever locked. If you have a basement, you're going to go TL footing. Right, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab this point. Oops, I did not finish that. Gosh, I'm going to do that every fucking time. I'm really bad about doing that. Top of footing. The top constraint needs to be foundation. Make sure it's on foundation. And that's the case for all the foundation walls. So if you're doing a basement, top of footing. Crawl space, top of garage footing. Garage, top of garage footing. They all, the top constraint for all of them is foundation. Up to foundation level. Okay, questions on that? Might be a little confusing. As long as you know what you're building, it helps. Okay, once I have my settings fixed, then I trace down across here and you won't see a thing. You're just gonna get lots of chimes and like Tinkerbell, it's all gonna be in there, okay? So I just popped that all in there. Now I need to look and see what I did to the poor thing, okay? So I threw those in and jumped to 3D real quick. And right here is my foundation walls. And what I'm looking for is I need them to be matching with the walls that are already there if you've got that part done. And that's what I'm looking to see here right now. They're just spinning the house around. Looks good. Okay, now for those of you who are from Kearns coming back, I'm going to have to do this again on Wednesday. Oh my gosh. So all of the basement walls, all my basement walls are done this way. They're just trace around the perimeter of the house. Um, for those of you who have not been there, when you um, can't see those. You can do them on the first floor, but you can also go to your 
basement floor. And if you're in your basement floor, in order to see the floor above, and all right, now I can see I've got some issues. So what I didn't have problems with before, now I do. So basement floor is when they go to fix this. So here's my 10 inch foundation wall for the basement. It goes from the top of footing to the foundation and it traces the inside of my house. Just trace the entire inside of the house with, with that. Okay, does that make sense what's going on here, guys? Okay. So what I've got to do is I've got to fix this. I do not want little gaps like this happening. So I'm going to use my modify and my align tool. I'm going to take the house and line the porch up to that and also stick it in there so it connects. So I got a good connection right here. And then do that again over here. Now line, shorten this up. That means this cap, that concrete cap hangs over and they can do that. You can overhang a concrete cap by one foot. So I'm not gonna worry about what's going on above my head right now. I'm just trying to make sure my thorns are all set for ease. And then I connect it here and pull that in so it's all one monolithic piece right here. Okay, now what that means though, if I'm gonna use this for storage, I've gotta go in the basement and put a door in here to get into there, okay? And you need to put a door there because we're not gonna heat this, we're not gonna insulate it. So once you get down to this level, once you're two feet below the surface of the soil, we hit 46 degrees year round in Utah which is what's so nice about basements. They keep us nice and cool. Um, but if you're trying to be warm in the winter and you go down there, it's 46 degrees, um, your toes are gonna turn purple really quick. And your nose will turn pink. And if you fall asleep, you may not wake up. No, you'll wake up. Right. Okay, so that fixes this one, but I do see my porch overhead and I see this line here. So that has me another concern. So now I'm gonna go back to my first floor and everything's looking good, but I'm gonna check it in 3D. And the best way to do that now is go my top view because I can see the textures. And I wanna make sure that I'm seeing what I want to see. So there's my floor, there's my foundation. That tells me that I'm not lined up, that that's an edge. And so you've got to look at these edges a little bit and kind of get a feel for what we want to have happen there. Let's go flip this around again. And you've got to get to where you feel comfortable maneuvering. Here's the edge of my concrete. Here's the edge of my foundation. So they do not line up. Happy day. Back to the basement. And I'm going to take my align tool and use the edge of my foundation and the outside edge and push that back so they line up. Okay, super important. Now I know that right now this slab, if I can get that to select, let me see if I can select it. So I can get a hold of that. Nope. Right now, if you can see, there's a little line that goes right down here. I haven't taken it all the way over. I'm not gonna worry about that right now because I'm gonna put some stairs here to get up on there. So I'm gonna worry about that a little bit later, okay? All right, so that gets me lined up there. While I'm here, let's go ahead and put the footing underneath uh, the rest of it. Now I've got the wall that's gonna be here for the foundation. So Kearns, just trace your house, okay? And if you're then tracing the inside walls, then you wanna be on the finished face interior for your lines. And again, to do that, I didn't tell you, did I? When you wanna see your upstairs, if you're in the basement, go down where it says underlay, change the range base to first floor, then hit apply and you'll see your upstairs. That way you can see what you're tracing. And then pause a minute and catch my breath. Oh boy, so many circles. I'm not going to listen to that song ever again after this year because it reminds me of this class is too much. Okay, while you guys are tracing this, again, just go all the way around the perimeter. I'm going to do the what you'd use for your garage. 
or if you're not doing a basement, you would use this for the entire perimeter for the basement area. It's called a footing level. We're then do this next, our structure, go into wall, still do the eight inch concrete foundation for this one, um, except we're gonna change the setting. It's gonna be top of garage footing now and up to found for foundation. So we're gonna go different level. I want this to just, in my case, it's just to be right along the front here. There's already a foundation wall here in the house. So just across the front. And then see that, oh, flip it over and drag it right into the foundation wall of the garage. Just shove it right in there. Okay, yay. Now that's good. Happy day here again. Okay, so that was an easy part. That gets us our two foundations for either a cold storage space under the porch or just a crawl space. I need footings underneath them. Now, some people choose not to do a footing underneath these. Uh, that's when you get settling to happen where the basement or the floor shifts on you. And that's usually not a good idea. So we're gonna put a footing underneath these. Uh, that's also in the structure. And it's under the wall, not this first wall, but the wall that's under the footing of the foundations. This is your footing. So we click on that. And what we did is we made one in class was 30 by 10. Is that correct? Yeah. And there's one in there already that's a 20 by 10. Um, if you are not doing a basement, the 20 by 10 will work for everything you're doing. If you have a basement, you need to make take that one, duplicate it, and make it a 30 by 10. And I'm gonna go, go so everybody pick 20 by 10. Man, this is, it's hard to keep track of what I'm talking about. I usually don't jump around this much. When I go edit type, what you're changing there is, this is a 20 by 20, that's referring to the width. So if you're going to a 30 by 10, you're gonna make that uh, two foot six by 10. If um, for the house to make your life easier on the house side, make it 12. Okay, so change the 10 to 12. Write that down so you remember it. Um, for those of you who are with me, I think that's what we did. No, we didn't. We changed it to 10, didn't we? Yeah, we're going to change that. I'm going to do a rename, change it to 12 here, and change this to 12 one foot. I'm just going to do that and make that fix. It's going to automatically take care of itself. And it's fine. I think, I oh, know, I think I just messed it up. Do what you want. We'll fix, I'll fix it all for all of you. Okay. Once you get your footing created, and in this case, I'm going to use the 20 by 20, 10. I want to do this in 3d because I can see it better. So when I go into 3D, I want to angle it around so I can see where my porch way is. And, and I can see I've got a pretty good gap here. Yay gap. But I want to pick the bottom of the wall and the footing will automatically appear just by selecting that part of the wall. The footing's always go on the bottom, so you don't have to worry about it. Let's see if we can this around a little bit more. And a lot more, I guess. So you can see each wall and then just pick the bottom of the wall and I'll put those footings on there. Okay. And that, that cleans that up nice and pretty and neat. Okay. So that's, that's the footings. That's all what we did with footings. You either go from the top of the footing to the foundation or the top of the garage footing to the foundation, depending on what your house needs are. We are going to swing those around and everything's going to be really good and peachy. Now, I'm going to go to my front view in 3D because I can see it easier here. And this is my dilemma. So here is my concrete slab. And that is not my front view. Let's go square on with the world. Here's my concrete slab. It's got a huge gap here. This is my wood framing here. Still got a gap, okay? So I've got to close those off in order to make them usable. And this is where we get start getting down to more and more detail. 
a lot more precision, a lot more planning, a lot more being focused on what we're doing because um, what we do for the cold space will not work for the porch space, okay? So what should we start with? Do you wanna start with the porch or the cold storage? Porch. porch, good choice, easy to see. Okay, going back to the basement. And I'm going back to the basement because I can see the wall of where my porch is gonna be. Okay, now what's happening here is you have some framing that's gonna come across in the pace, place of the view, some big vertical lines. That's gonna be the wood framing that makes up the nine and a half inch TGIs. We gotta drop that floor down a little bit though. It's way, way too high. Because this is set for our house has an 11, almost a 12 inch TGI, 11, seven, eight. So we got quite a bit of difference here. So we're gonna do a little bit of really fine tuned detailing. And this is what keeps the spark alive in design is now you're creating character to the house. Anybody can just slap down and draw four walls and say, here, go. Um, yeah, okay, fine. And you, you'll get what you get. But I wanna detail this out. So I'm gonna take my vertical section line and I'm gonna slide that over to anywhere within where the porch area is. And again, if you wanna make this all cold space, you can but I'm gonna now go to that view. So right click, go to view. And here is where I'm working is right here. So there's my nine and a half inch TGI with three and quarter inch OSB and half inch gypsum board. Okay, first thing, I don't need gypsum board outside. That's just asking for trouble. That's not a good idea, okay? So we're there fix this floor and create a new one. Um, you guys should be getting old school at this now. So edit type, duplicate, drop off the half inch gypsum board because that's going bye bye. So just the OSB can stay and you can, that OSB, you can actually, let's change that to Tyvek, take OSB off and put in Tyvek, T-Y-V-E, Tyvex, T V E X. Yeah, I think that's right. T Y V E X. That is a synthetic wood. It's man made. It's made from recycled plastics, uh, which means it holds up for a long time. It's usually made out of recycled PVC piping. Uh, so it's got a long. On deck. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just a little bit better material. Um, three quarter of an inch. Uh, we're going to actually add a half inch to that. Crazy enough, make it a little thicker. So hit OK there and then go edit your structure. We're going to go to the oh, plywood sheathing here. And there's not a Tyvek symbol because it's supposed to be wood. It's a wood. So we're going to change this plywood sheathing. Once you change that to um, uh, lumber, just go type lumber and find a soft lumber because that'll give us the look we're looking for. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the soft lumber and use the rendering on that. I will paint it a different color. Um, when we get to that point, we wanna paint it. I'll probably put a, a grid system to it so it looks like slats, but just use soft lumber for right now. Apply and okay. Then if I'm gonna add a half inch to this, what is three quarter plus one half equal? And a half? One. One and a quarter. One and a quarter, yep. So make the zero a one, make the three a one, and then line five, highlight it and delete it. You still have the same thickness, um, but we want that uh, Tyvek um, to be a little thicker. Um, it's actually a little bit thicker than that, but it shrinks in the winter. So we'll, we'll design for the shrinkage so that we can adjust for that because it's always better to think of the worst case scenario. Uh, plastic doesn't expand a great deal in the, in the heat, but it does shrink a lot. Um, so we just kind of watch for that just a little bit. So we hit okay, we hit okay. Now that still looks the same. We have to do some mathematical calculations here, okay? 
this is the top of my foundation wall where this needs to sit. It actually needs to sit on that wall an inch and a half above it. There needs to be a mud seal there. Remember we did our wall sections? There's a mud seal there. So I need to move it so it's within an inch and a half of that surface. I'm not going to draw the mud seal right now. Um, we're hoping to get to that point, but I want to get positioned correctly. So I'm going to measure from the top of the foundation to the bottom of my framing, and I'm getting four and a quarter. Is that what you guys are getting? Okay. So now we have to get out a calculator. And if you don't have calculators, pull your phones out. I mean, you mostly use them anyway. And go to your calculator setting. I'm going to take 4.25 and then a minus 1.5 from that. And you should get what? Two and three bits? You guys know what a bit is? A bit's 25 cent piece. So shaving a haircut, two bits. That's what it used to cost. 50 cents for shaving a haircut. That's where that little bitty comes from. You know what shaving a haircut is? That secret knot that people do. That's all that. So I'm going to move this floor, offset the height, a negative 2.75 inches. Make sure you put the inches, not the feet. We're just going to drop it down. And then you hit apply. Enter won't do it for you. You have to hit the apply. And we drop it down. That's where that floor sits. Now, as a general rule, in fact, it's a rule. You never want your porch to be the same level as your main floor. Because then any water that's on the porch goes in your house. You always want a little bit of a drop there. This is a quite a bit of a drop. It's actually a little step. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put a little stepping stone there, basically, a little threshold piece to go on there. Okay. Could I just use 11 7 eighths? Absolutely. Yep. You could have. Yep. It just a little overkill. And if I can get some cheaper wood, that's better. Now, keep in mind this though. Okay. If I look at the whole section of my building here, and we're going to be talking about this very, very quickly. If I measure from where this foundation is all the way to the front, um, that is 41 feet. Um, I might be able to do that with all the same size building material. That would be cheaper. If I can only span 36 feet though, and that's a big if, then I've, I'm not saving any money. So when we talk about spans, this nine and a half, some of you may change that depending on the size of your house. Okay, whatever makes it cheaper. That's our goal. Okay. Now in the front here, this void comes right out flush the front. It actually doesn't. There's what's called a rim joist that sits here. And that's what we need to put on here now is the rim joist. Now that can be covered with siding or it can be painted. I prefer the siding aspect of that, um, kind of, or stucco it so it looks a little finished. That's going to be up to you. Um, what do you guys want to do today? Do you want to do stucco? Do you want to do siding? Do you want to just do paint? So many opinions on everything. But if I asked you who the better president is of the last 49, who would it be? No opinion on that either. Coke or Pepsi? Well, at least there's opinion on something. I like. Yeah. Fine, I found it. Um, <laughs> so, okay, um, so I'm going to just put the rim joist on it then, and I'll paint it. Okay, because we're just, just down inches of time. Okay, so now I've got my height worked out. And I want to do one more measure and say my work because I'm trying to model good to behavior from the top of the foundation to the top of my porch is one and a quarter inches. I actually only need to go up to the Tyvek. I need 11 inches. Okay. You see that line there? That's my, my framing area. So I only need to go up 11 inches. That's the size of my rim joist for this behavior right here. Okay, here we go. Basement level. 
I have to make a new wall. And this is an actual new wall that doesn't exist. It's a brand new wall. So I'm going to go architecture and wall. So hopefully those of you at our home, I know that I don't have laptops for everybody right now. I'm waiting for some to come back in. I was hoping some would come back in this afternoon, but it doesn't look like any have. So um, I guess if those that want laptops aren't even here yet, that's not doing any good. But you've got to figure out some way to, to catch up. It's, and so take good notes. All right, so I'm going to go on my wall. I'm going to start with one of my exterior walls that I already have. It's easier to start with that than to build from scratch. Um, Oh man, I don't know what I want. I'm just gonna do um, choices. I'm gonna start with the wood side and on wood side. I'm just gonna go with that one because I can't think of anything else to do right now. Okay. So I'm gonna start with that and then go right into edit type and then duplicate it right off the bat. So when I duplicate that, um, the name is going to now change completely just wipe the whole thing out and the whole new name and this will be porch and i just call it skirt s-k-i-r-t because all it's doing is skirting across the top if that's offensive then we can do porch uh, rim joist and that'll work as well but it's just you're skirting off the edge of it uh, if you're doing a mobile home if anybody ever lived seen a mobile home these little trailers a lot of times we'll put skirts around the perimeter to hide that there's nothing underneath the house but wheels, which in its concept is a little odd, but it's what it is. So they're called skirts. That's where that comes from. Okay, now on the edit structure, um, I'm going to have to leave the plywood sheathing on here. Um, I'm going to leave the clap, uh, yeah, I'll leave the clapboard, I guess, because I'm using the siding. So I'm going to leave all this and then come down. The lumber thickness is going to change to an inch and a half now because we're turning these on their end. They're not standing up this way, they're going this way. So we're going from here to here. Okay. And then the finished stuff goes away. So everything below the core, you can delete out. And that's going to bring us down to two and three quarters of an inch if we're going to leave the siding on there. Okay, because that's adding three quarters of an inch uh, and the sheathing on there. I really don't need both, um, but it's there. So um, we'll just go ahead and use that. I think it'll work. I, I will probably most likely change that siding out before this is done, but it's a start. So I hit OK, and I hit OK. So we've got a brand new wall here. We got to look at our constraints. The base of that is on top of the foundation. So that goes to the foundation. The top unconnected portions that stand connected don't connect it. But we set the height at 11 inches because that's what we measured. And the fact that I can keep all these words in my mouth and remember that, it's pretty amazing for an old guy. Okay, I'm going to do this on finish face exterior. And I'm going to come right down on the front here. And I'm just going to drag that wall across. You won't see it. It's another one of those. I got to trust I did everything right all the way across the front of where that porch is. Now, where you will see it is in the section. And here's my section, and it's going the wrong way. So I'm just going to flip it. And now it's right because I drew it backwards. So go in your section. If it's sitting on the outside of your foundation, hit your space bar and flip it over. So bad, good, bad, good, good, bad, bad, good. I'll throw someone off watching YouTube sometime. Okay, that finishes off that piece. This portion is 80% done. Woohoo. Okay, that takes care of that. Let's go back to our basement again. I'm exhausted. Okay, go back to your basement. And we're then now move over to the cap area. The cap area is considerably different. So I'm going to move my section cut all the way over to here now. 
I still can use the same section view. Section two doesn't change. I just relocated it. It's like zooming in with a scope or I'm on a hunting trip. I gotta go kill something. Or I just gotta do it, something. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in my section two. Let me check chat, so it's looking pretty good. Okay, so that's what I did, Rebecca. I did sighting on that. Um, so I go back into section two. Here's my slab, it's way up here. Okay, now this one's considerably different. It is set on the first floor. This fix is really easy, super easy. Change it from the first floor to the foundation. And then hit apply. Kept. It is a kept, it's done, that's it. Now, you notice there's gonna be a step here now, for sure. Between the two different floors that I've done, there's gonna be a step. And um, that's where it starts to get kind of fun. I'm starting to create a little bit more um, finesse to this. Between the, the top of foundation and the soil is eight inches. I don't need any stairs there. That's a step up. Just step up once. Then I need another step to get up onto this deck and another one to get into the house. So, and those all have to be custom built as we get things finished out here. So it's looking good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling happy. <laughs> I'm gonna go check it out in 3D because I want to see it looks good. Pretty, 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 pretty. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Now what I've got is mixed meth materials here. <coughs> Do not worry about that. Remember this flooring void is not really there. It's a void. It's a space holder. So we've got that there to hold our space. We then put framing into that, which means you have to redo everything here again, okay? So you can see it. Here's where I need a step. And here is not a step. So I need one step up from this level up to this level. And I've got, uh, I don't need to put, I should put a trim joist across there, but I think I can get by without it. Okay, so we're gonna go to the first floor now to make our first step. Just looking at my wood, looks good. Okay, first floor we go. And if you're, everybody with me here? Okay, so I need a step right here. I'm not going to use the stair tool for this. It just doesn't make sense to do so. Um, you can still use a concrete step here. Uh, you can use a wood step. Um, I prefer to go stone when I can, um, inclu that includes concrete. One, it's less maintenance. It's bad enough when you have to, a wood deck that you have to sand and restain every three years. And sometimes two in Utah. That's why we're going with the plastic fake wood. Um, but I want to make sure my life is as simple as possible. And so I'm just gonna put a simple step in there. Um, and I'm gonna do that with uh, my floor. So architecture and floor. And I'm gonna use that floor slab because it's easiest to work with. So I'm gonna edit that out. And actually I'm just gonna leave that four. I think I'm gonna go four inches. I should have measured my height. I didn't measure the height. That's probably bad. But I know I'm going four inches. So I'm gonna start with four. So I'm gonna use that four inch floor slab again. I'm gonna use my rectangle tool. I'm gonna come down here at the end of my porch and they go out at least 11 inches, maybe even 12, I think 12 feels good, and then up to the other side. And you can spend the next two hours eyeballing that to make it work, or just use your modify, select the dang line, and edit the sucker down to what you need it to be. Woohoo. Now, when you get that in place, you wanna make sure that that is on the foundation level not the um, finished floor. And then I get that and I check it off. And, and then, no, I'm not attaching it this time because I know it's in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna take my horizontal section this time, slide it down to go through that step. And then I'm gonna go to that view. And I am recording this and I will post it as it is. Um, it's going to take me a few hours to get it there, so be patient with me. And I go to sec go to the view. 
So there's my step. It's down inside my concrete cap. Because remember, floors go down, not up. So I'm going to select that little step right there. I'm going to do an offset of four inches and raise that up. Now, I need to get up to this level here. So I'm going to use my modify and then do some measuring now. From that step up is 11 more inches. That means this step is not enough to do it. Not if I'm going to do um, three of them. And I could. I could definitely do three. So again, it comes down to uh, what would you like to see me do? I can do this with stacking four inch units, which is typically what would happen here is we'd have some four inch um, pavers. They'd stack and make the steps at this point. Or we can, in this case, actually make a stair and do a stair here. Which would you like to do? Because of my total height here, if I'm really getting into that and getting serious about it, from the foundation to the floor is almost one foot four. So I could do steps. What would you guys like to see? And any suggestions from the online host? Or horde, I guess you're more of a horde. Congress, murder, gaggle, flock, school, nothing. So whatever I want to do is fine. Okay, cool. I'll just do whatever I want. You guys watch, you figure it out. I'm going to take that out and go back to my first floor. Well, it's not my first floor. That's not my one floor. This first floor. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to go architecture. I'm going to go to a stair. Um, I'm going to make that stair, uh, first of all, six foot wide because that's my porch. That's yours. You know what you're doing. So I go from the foundation level all the way up to the first floor level. Works out good. I need two steps. So I'm going to come out here, drag two steps. Looks spiffy. I'm going to check that off. I'm going to do a move because this is all old school. So grab onto that. Finish the selection. Grab the endpoint. Slide it over. Boom. Check a look, a look, a boom. Check a look, a look, a boom. There's my step. Go back into 3D, see if I like it. Oh, I like it, but I don't like the railings because I did some screwy stuff to those. So there's my step snap. Now, I don't like that. That's where skunks live. That would be bad. Okay. So I look at my stair style that I have here. I go in my edit my type. This is a monolithic cast and place stair. If I change that to a precast stair, that'll close it off a little bit more. I can kind of live with that. Not really, but I'm going to. It's kind of there a little bit. It's a little less open anyway. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that for right now. And then I'll make a note to seal off completely. Now, when I look at this step, um, I've got a problem here. So what's the problem with what I just did? Now it's home for snakes. Absolutely, Rebecca. It is a snake hole. Mm -hmm. um, what's my other problem I've got here, though? Have you ever walked up one, two steps and had the third one a different height? Have you ever experienced that? Is it fun? No, it sucks. It's, it's like, let me just fall on my face now so you can laugh at me for the next 20 years of my life, which is what your family would do, right? So when we set this stair, I told it to go where? All the way to the first floor. I'm going to take that off and go none. And that means I've got to look at my desired stair height. What is the tall height there? It was almost one foot four. Let's apply that. And did that stair change? No. So this stair didn't change. So that means I've got to redo the stair. If I'm going to do that, I need to be pretty darn exact. So editing stairs sometimes works to your benefit. Many times you have to do it the hard way. Can I measure vertically in 3D? No, because it's grayed out. So I have to go into my section. And in this case, I want section one. And I want to measure that height exactly. 
and that goes all the way up and make sure your lines are going as straight as you can possibly get them. And that in is a problem sometimes. So then shift where I'm at because I keep getting a brick line. So I need to go, I'm getting exactly one foot three this time. Okay. But that is not my top. My top is here. So I keep making the same mistake. I'm such a fool. I need to go one foot and a quarter. You guys getting the same thing on yours? Okay. So that's considerably different for that stair. So one foot and a quarter of an inch. One foot and a quarter inch. Now I'm going to go back to my um, first floor and then do that stair all over again. Make it a little bit more exact. Stair. Um, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to do a wood stair on this actually, mainly so I don't have any more snake holes, but I'm going to do a closed two side residential. And yes, it's going to be wood. I'm going to paint it to look like concrete and fake it out. Okay, so it's going to go again, base is foundation again. Top level, I'm taking that off and going none and putting in the one foot 0.25 inches. Check and make sure I got everything in there right because it yells at me if I don't. So one foot 0.25 inches. I apply that. And now when I draw the stair, I'm just going to pick a point and draw that step. It tends to be one step or two steps, one tread. And then I do a move and position. Actually, I'm check that off first, sorry. Then I'm going to do a select and a move, grab a corner, pop it in. It's going to go underneath this wall, and I'm fine with that because I'm going to get rid of that handrail. So when I go back to section one now, there's my steps. It doesn't quite go up, but it will make because I shoved it in there too far. So uh, let's go 3D and see what it looks like. And I could possibly pull that out of, oh, I did too. It's supposed to be. Um, I'll fix it. Um, let's go back to section one. I'm going to move it forward. I'm going to use the align tool. Pull that for, oh, yes. So I'm going to do a little creativity here. Um, so I get to where I want it. This back. No, it's just too close again. So I want to be aligned, but not all the way aligned. So this is going to do shift there. Now, when I select this, there really isn't a way to adjust this profile. I can hit edit stair, but this line does not have a profile to it. I, I can't just change that. The other problem I'm having is I didn't have a, on both sides. And so I made a Big boo boo on that one because I deleted it out at some point. So let me get that put back in. First floor. So here, and I want that railing back in. You do, 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 do. I'm going to mirror it, is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use the mirror with the pencil, selecting the handrail, enter that in, find my midpoint. Where is it going now? Mirror that finish. It kicks me out. Okay, fine. Why is it doing this to me today? Do, 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 do. I want that to. When I select it, kicks down the mirror. That's kind of weird. That's what I get for deleting things in demo mode and not remembering why I deleted it. So if you have it on both sides, that's good. I'm actually just going to maybe flip the stair over. That might be a little easier. And let's take a look and see what I just did. Not so much easier. I need to mirror it over. So flipping um, can be good if you can get it to flip the right way. 
Um, and I don't have any flip arrows. Anyway, that gets a stare, and I've got moist touch. So I'll fix this and show you how to fix it a little bit later. I still got two more things we've got to do here. All right, now, if there's a step, there's typically a requirement that there's a handrail. And that's the next thing you guys want to put in here. Now, you could keep this all the same level. There's no nothing that says you can't. You just don't want to be exactly the same level as the main floor. It's got to be down just a little bit to keep water from going in there. The next thing I need to add to this, and this is why I'm going to stop on the stair for right now, is I need a, a handrail and I also need a stair to get up to the deck. So I'm going to put one more stair in, and I'm, hopefully I can get everything fixed in the process of doing that. is I need a step coming up to the front. So I know where to put sidewalks and that kind of thing. So architecture, stair again. And then leave it at six feet because I kind of like the feel of that. Start, the base level is now going to be your finished grade. And this top level will now be the finished first floor. So that's going to be a considerably larger. Um, and then go and look at the type. I can't believe it's not giving me, I'm going to just switch my type here. Open and close two sides, open two sides. Uh, let's just do, um, I'll just do open two sides on this one. I'm going to come out here in front, way in front of my porch, I'm just going to drag that in. So I have it going in the right direction, check that off. Then I go in and I move it. I don't try and guess where it's going to be exactly at because that's just too much pressure. So I'm going to try and line it up with the edge and so it's centered on the door. Now if you can't see the door centering, remember you can go in and draw a model line, find the midpoint of the door and pull that way out of the property, uh, into the property because it'll disappear underneath things. And I'm off just a little bit but I want it to be centered, so I'm going to go ahead and center that. And go from there to there. And move that again. Boy, things are just not right. I moved the handrail. Take the stair, move. Find that end point and move it over. So now it's centered. And if I look at that now in the 3D mode, there's my 2D looking at it. It's all set up my steps, 3D, back up. It's like this. And yes, you then get this overlap. Don't worry about that right now um, until you get everything sol solved out. Most likely this little back piece here, again, I dropped that floor down. It doesn't go all the way up. I need to remove and adjust my numbers. I didn't do that again. Um, what if I did just leave everything at first floor? What if I change that now? What if I move that whole floor up? Would that make anything really bad? So right now I'm down two and three quarters is what I moved it. What if I just went down three quarters of an inch and I pulled that two out? That's still below my first floor, which is essential. That's a big deal. But now things start to look like they're a little bit more intentional on there. And I still got these floating handrails I need to trim up. Um, so remember, when you make changes, they do have longer consequences. But you can adjust that floor. Just you don't worry about where, you, where everything's at. You can make those adjustments, OK? Now, if your soil, and this is something that hasn't happened to anybody yet because you've all been diligently doing exactly what I tell you to do while you're texting mom and, and sending love letters to your girlfriend and, and uh, chatting with someone through Google Connect and whatever else you're doing. Um, if your porch ends up being 30 inches or higher, you need a guardrail so that little Tommy doesn't fall off and break his little head. And then he cries for hours and hours and he has a concussion and falls asleep and dies. That would be bad. So I need to teach you now how to do a guardrail. 
guardrails will also be in play on your second floor or your first floor, in fact, after your basement, around the stair openings so people don't fall down and go boom. We have to protect people from being stupid. That's our main job as a designer, especially in architecture, is to keep everybody safe. So on that happy note, your best, I'm just do a simple um, rail coming across the front here. I'm going to work on the higher one because this other one's low enough. I don't need a handrail or a guardrail on it. So I'm just going to come across the front of the house um, just for demonstration easies. And I've got to do a lot of cleanup on this house to make it user friendly because right now it's so freaking strange. Um, to do guardrails, go into your um, level you want. Well, in this case, I'm going to go on the first floor and I'm going to simplify my life by switching out this floor right now. And I'm just going to bring it up to, um, I'm just going to take out the offset completely right now. Okay. I'm going to cheat it. Oh, actually, I deleted the whole balloon thing. That was not good. No, I'm going to do it right. I will do this the right way because I'm that kind of a teacher. So I'm going to look and then write down my number on my floor that I'm down two and three quarter because I keep forgetting that. So pencil. Notepad. Um, Who's is this? Do? Thresher, I still have your um, pass to get off and on campus. Okay, go into your first floor plan. And I'm going to put a guardrail right across here. Okay, here goes everything. All right, we go into architecture. As you go across, you may have noticed that before you get to stairs, you have railings. Railings are separate from stairs. So I'm going to click on the railings. And they need to be continuous lines. So what I'm going to do is we're going to sketch a path out here and then do railings in front of my house for a minute. They're going to be on the first floor so I can see them. And I want to show you what happens. So I'm going to mimic or parallel what's going to happen here. I want a guardrail that comes along, gets the stair, stops, picks up on the other side, and continues on. That shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, that's what the railings are going to do. There's going to be, I got to have a stairway open. If I check that off, I'm going to get a warning that says, hey, bucko, they're not connected. Oh, well, okay. I guess I'll continue. If I take the one off, then I don't have a problem. Okay, so I take one off and hit the check mark. Oh, no worries. It's all good, mate. Um, except when I go into my 3D, I find out that I have this floating bar because I got rid of all my mullions. So I'm going to go put those back in right now. I'm going to change that handrail out to that. I'm going to change this one to the same way. And so I have these railings in there. That's what I'm trying to do is make it all look pretty light. Okay, so I got my rails back. So here's my rails. This is what they're gonna look like. Nothing fancy, simple. You can, again, customize and change those. We've gone over that when we did stairs. So now that I know what I'm doing and I fixed these guys, and I might as well fix this little puppy dog over here. Just go and say, guardrail, pop that in there. This guy, I don't need, he's going away. So now I've got, a little things quick cleaned up that happen once I get forced in the situation, which is usually when I make fixes. So I'm going to go back into my plan view again. And I'm going to draw that rail. So architecture, railing. And I'm going to start off of where this would be. And I can just kind of eyeball just a little bit. So I'm just going to bring that in. I'm going to come off the edge a little bit. And then go all the way to the brick of, or the stucco or the siding or whatever you're covering your house with. Okay, now once I get that in there, I'm going to use the modify. I'm going to select that line again. So I make sure that it's in selection. Now, as I look at that, there's a couple of things that are going on here. The shape is by the host, so it means the line. The height connection is the type that can be custom. 
these you can change. When you get in there, that is probably the worst thing to do is try and change those. I would suggest you not try and change anything in this bar and that would make getting more advanced with Revit. These options to change on this floating bar will get you into more trouble with Revit than anything else. This is part of the code that is very open, very, very open. And you can get some trouble. So I'm gonna check back out of that. And then I've got my really still selected. My base offset is gonna be here. This is where I put in that negative two and three quarter. So I'm gonna just drop this down to match my, my um, porch top. And just to check that in. Oh, you got it. Oh, sorry. So sorry. Minus two points. It's easier to just wipe the whole thing out. It really is. Place that in there. Now, when I go in and look at this, and this is going to my south elevation, there's my handrail. It's gone back to the default because I haven't left that guardrail in there. But what I want to see is that it comes all the way down to the floor of the deck. That's what you're looking for. Okay. Now, as I work in that, again, check multiple angles, see what you're getting, make sure you like what you see. Um, I've got a little thing here because I don't have my roof on yet. I can still look at this, which is part of the reason why we're doing it now. If I look at it from the top, here's my handrail, here's my stair. My stair rail is right up in here as well. And if I can see those, you can um, kind of position things. So gray to gray, I'm going to do a move. And this is to help me get the other side lined up. I'm going to do a move of, um, probably I better do this on the floor plan, be easier. Go with floor plan view. If I take this railing and I do a move from this corner down to the corner of the handrail. Yeah, there's going to be a little gap here. But I should, in theory, I can edit those together, not this way, but um, I can probably get in there and edit them out. For one thing, I can take this, I can edit the path, take that line, and I can stretch it to the exact other side. So now what's happening is my rail comes up and they connect. You do have to check your elevation. Make sure it's looking kind of what you want. Your handrails will probably shoot up above. But the problem with my handrail is this. I'm up two and three quarter of an inches here now as it is. So the easy fix for these um, is to just redo the stair and then these will line up. Okay, then back to the plan. I do the same thing on the other side. Architecture, railing, I'm going to go ahead this time and choose the one that's there so it's all matchy matchy. Uh, pick my point, drag my line all the way over to the next one. Check that off. And now if I look at my plan view, I'm offset a little bit because I drew by the center line. Use the align, get those handrails to line up. And that is sometimes more work. It's not too much work, it's just a little bit of work. I want this endpoint to go here. Go and edit the path. Stretch this one over. And now my handrails are kind of more where I want them to be. Okay, now, my friends, that's a long day. Um, I haven't given you how much time left, but I should have. Okay, we're going to go to that point. Um, okay. Um, if you're doing on the back of this, some the back, you can do a porch here or in the back, you can do a patio, which would just be a concrete slab on the finished grade. Okay. Now keep in mind that your topography is also there. So if you're doing your concrete pad, raise the concrete pad up, offset it up off the base by like two inches. Then you won't have the overlapping issue. Uh, and that would just be a concrete pad in the back. If you want to do a porch, you can do a porch, okay? Um, there's one other thing we can do on this front, but I'm waiting until we figure out our roof lines. 
when you're in here on 3D, you'll see it more than ever. Anything else? Is you've got a pretty large space for this to span. I may need some columns in here, which will change the nature of that railing to support the roof that goes over the porch. We, we're just gonna wait and put those in after we get that roof done to figure out, okay, do I need a column here? Or can I go with, do I need four, do I need two, do I need six? We gotta size that out when we get to that point, okay? So we're gonna not put those columns in until we get the roof line done. But use your math, don't have any little trippers here like this. Go back through, set your stair heights to match what your porch is off the foundation, off the finished grade. I don't think I even did that right, did I? Yeah, finished grade. And then if I go with finished floor, you can come in here and I can just say, oops, let's do, maybe I can change it here and do a minus 2.75 inches. That's 375, almost right. Too many keys, enter that in, apply it, boom. Now my stair fixes. It's not difficult to, once you get things written down and you know where they're at, and all of a sudden look at how nice these railings connect. This one not so much, because I didn't connect it all the way. Um, but this one is. So if, once I get things connected, things look really good. And you just have to go and see why they didn't connect. And most of the time, uh, it might be simply doing uh, a little corner fillet on there. Let's see if that'll grab it. And sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So I need to adjust these just a little bit to get that all pristine on there. Oh, I haven't dropped this one down. So I got to do the same thing here. I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting that I've got to do what I do to one, I have to do all. And apply that. Now it's not floating in the air and they connect. Okay. So your math is going to be really important at this point. We're getting into the big stuff. I'm going to start with the guys that are online, what questions you guys have, and then they'd work with the class. And the rest of the time is now lab time. If you do not have questions, you are free to um, meander off and do what you need to do for the day. Uh, keep in mind there will be an announcement tonight regarding Weaver State's design build day. There are prizes. Um, and if you were to, we came to class late, you'll have to watch the, uh, read what's in the announcement to get that. All right, questions, let's hear them. Not even chat. You guys are all just gone, huh? Okay. Um, I'm going to go help the um, parents' kids figure out what to do with their life. See if we can make some better life choices. All right. Um, if you do have questions, holler. I'll be right back over to help you. Uh, again, Fridays are open to, if you're live, if class, your court, ugh. if your school is off dismissal, you can come in on Fridays to catch up. That's what we kind of hope and see. And I will um, post this recording as well.